Hello there! Welcome to the User Interface Guide, building your own customised UI from scratch. My name is Tusky, and today we will discuss getting started with your very own custom-built user interface, discussing useful add-ons and going through the process of building your own UI. Just to clarify, it's more than fine to use the default World of Warcraft interface. It works just fine for any aspect of the game. However, WoW's great customizability in the form of add-ons will allow you to build an interface that works better, is more customizable, and allows for greater conveyance of information than the default interface. Now, while it's certainly possible to just download a large UI add-on like LVUI, I would advise against it, especially if you haven't really dabbled in add-ons before. It will completely overhaul your UI and give you so many features that you'll likely just get overwhelmed. I find that building my own user interface grants me a much deeper knowledge of what I'm seeing. Starting from scratch also allows much more customizability, and in the event that things go wrong, issues will be much easier to fix because you've spent the time dabbling with the interface itself. We'll start with a basic overhaul, using my level 65 Paladin as our example. Here you can see the default user interface. He currently has no add-ons enabled. To start our interface, we're going to want to be able to move and customize his action bars, his unit frames, his cast bars, his raid frames, and his combat text. That sounds like a lot, but we're going to go over it step by step. First, let's look about downloading the add-ons we'll need for this. We're going to want Bartender for the action bars, Shadowed Unit Frames for the unit frames, Quartz for the cast bars, Voodoo for the raid frames, Scrolling Combat Text for the combat text, and Bigwigs for raiding bars. Remember, this is only what I use and suggest, and there are plenty of alternatives to these add-ons. I feel that these add-ons are a great start, but if you already have your own add-ons for these, don't worry about changing. There are two main ways of downloading add-ons. The first is by manually downloading them. To do this, just download the add-on from the site, Curse is usually the best place in my opinion to find these add-ons, and then extract the zip or RAR file, remember you're going to need WinRAR or another kind of application to extract these files, into the World of Warcraft Interface Add-ons directory. This is normally found in the C Program Files path. However, there is another way to download add-ons, the Curse client. This requires a Curse account and a download of an application, but this client will allow you to download add-ons directly into your WoW folder and keep your current add-ons up to date. This is important when a new patch or expansion hits. Having outdated add-ons is bad. I thoroughly recommend the Curse client, but it is not 100% necessary. Now, once we have our add-ons downloaded, we're going to activate them. Under the add-ons section, just make sure you've got them activated. Now, back onto the Paladin. The interface now looks somewhat different, and this is where things can get a bit overwhelming. However, just try to concentrate on one thing at a time, we'll get it all sorted out. Let's start with the action bars. One note though before we begin, at any point you can change the size of your entire interface using the game's settings. Go to System, Advanced, and change the UI scale to what you want it to be. As you can see, mine is set to be very small. Most add-on options can be accessed by typing slash and then the name of the add-on into the chat box. You can also get to their options via the interface menu. We'll type slash bartender or slash bar to access our action bar add-on. Now, this window is draggable, so remember to move it to one side so that you can see your UI. I like to build my interface to be as clean as it can be, presenting important information to me near the centre of the screen. However, remember that you need to be able to actually see your character in the play space. No amount of add-ons yelling at you can replace good situational awareness. To that end, the first thing we're going to do is unlock our action bars. Just hit the lock button and your action bars will become green draggable, and you get a new window. The bar snap system here is really helpful for keeping your action bars neat. Keep it on unless you want to make very minor changes to your action bar placement. As you can see, each of the bars is numbered. You can access each bar's options by clicking its number on the bartender window. A quick rundown of what options are available here. Alpha changes the translucency of the bar. Generally, you want it at 100 all of the time. Scale changes the size. Anything above one is generally too big for my taste. Padding changes the space between buttons on the bar. I prefer 5 to 6 for this. Buttons changes the number of buttons visible on the bar. I like to keep this at 12 for my main bars and less for my utility bars. The button grid is just as it sounds. I prefer having this on, especially while leveling. Rows changes the way the bar is sorted. One has it in one long row, two changes it to two rows, and etc. This is very useful for customization, as you can see I've got mine set up like that. You can generally leave vertical and horizontal growth alone, as I've never needed to mess with them in my time of using this add-on. Flyout direction is useful for things like totems or buffs, as it lets you decide which direction the window for these buffs appears in. 
The buttons below are for advanced customization. We don't need them quite yet. Now, you might have noticed that there are more bars in the window than there are on screen. Just go down the bars in the window until you find one that looks like this, with no options. Just hit enable to give yourself an extra bar. You can't get, and probably won't need, more than 10 bars. Now, let's actually start moving things. I like having my bars in the bottom third of the screen, save for a few that are non-combat focused. Here, I'm dragging my bars to create a simple stack, with all of my spells very close together. The best thing to do at this point is to experiment. Take your time to find a setup that you like. It took me a very long time to work out the UI that you see on my shaman. A few tips. If you have any abilities that you need to monitor in some way, then I suggest making these emphasized. As you can see on my shaman, I have four important abilities directly below my character, clearly within eyesight. Try different ways of displaying these buttons, like changing scale, position, and rows. Make sure you leave room on your UI for your unit frames, raid frames, and cast bars. Once you have your bars set up in some kind of order, and you have your abilities laid out on them, let's go into keybinding. Keybinding with Bartender is very simple. Just hit the keybindings button. Make sure you haven't got your bars unlocked, and then just move over the button and press the keybinding. Simple as that. One note. If, like me, you have lots of keys that you know off by heart and that you don't actually need to see, then you can set the buttons up to be invisible. Abilities that are good for this are filler spells like Lightning Bolt, Incinerate or Jab, healing spells with no cooldown, and utility spells like Ghost Wolf. Things that have a cooldown, even a short one, you're going to want to monitor. To make invisible bars, I suggest having a single or maybe two bars with all of your abilities that you don't need to see on them. Keybind them. Then go to their options, turn the alpha down to zero, and then hit the click through button at the bottom. Once you're comfortable with your bars, let's move on to your unit frames. Shadowed unit frames can be a bit complicated, so much so that I may make another video focused entirely on tweaking it. For now, let's focus on getting the frames you want enabled and into position. Type slash SUF to access the options. There's loads of customization here, but before you move any frames, you'll want to decide which frames you want active. Go to enabled units on the left. Generally, you'll want player, pet, Target, Target of Target, Focus, Focus Target, Boss, and Arena enabled. The others are entirely up to you. Once you've decided what you want enabled, move over to the Hide Blizzard option. This will decide which basic default UI elements are hidden. Customize this as you wish. Generally, you'll want everything that you have in the enabled units also hidden here, so that you don't have two player frames, for instance. Once that's done, move on to the General tab. Hit the lock frames on the right. Suddenly, the UI looks really different. The add-on will show what each frame will look like while everything is active, from the icon to the markers to the buffs and the debuffs. At this point, you'll want to start off by dragging your player and target frames into position. I suggest having them near your action bars, so you can easily see your health and your enemy's health. Move the other bars around as you'd like. Things like arena frames and the boss bars you can move to the sides of the screen for reference only when you need them. You can edit things like the scale, height, and width by going to the Frame tab on each of the unit frame's options. Once you've got them into a good position, you'll want to make sure everything all lines up. If you have your player and target frame near each other, the slightest difference in position will be noticeable and will probably drive you crazy if given time. To get this sorted, go into the Unit Configuration option and use the plus button to expand the options out. Go to the frame you want to move, in this case, the target. This next part looks insanely complicated and we only want to focus on its positioning. At the top, go to the Frame tab. You'll want the X offset and Y offset options. Adjust these by typing in the numbers until you get it exactly right, and the two frames you're aligning have the same vertical or horizontal alignment. If you'd like, you can enable cast bars on any of your frames by going to their specific frame menu, going to the Bars tab, selecting Cast Bar, and enabling it. However, I'd not recommend doing this for your own or target cast bars, as Quartz will handle that. 
Finally, we'll talk about buffs and debuffs. You'll want to show these on your target, as they can provide useful information to you. Just remember that in a raid there will be a lot of debuffs on an enemy target. To edit these, go to the target, then the auras tab. Here, you can use the different settings to change exactly how your debuffs should look. Make sure they don't overlap any other parts of your UI. Now, let's move on to Voodoo, your raid frames. As I said, I prefer Voodoo, but it is not the only raid frame add-on that is available. This guide will only cover this particular add-on though. Type slash Voodoo Options or slash Voodoo OPT to get to the custom options screen. What you want out of your raid frames depends on your role and what kind of player you are. For instance, even though I'm normally a DPSer, I really like being able to see every raid member easily, which is why I have my raid frames close to the centre of my screen with my action bars. However, if you'd rather put them to one side, you can do so. But first, we want to get rid of a lot of the miscellaneous clutter and streamline the frames. Start by going to the Move tab. As you can see here, after a little dragging, there are multiple panels for different things. Generally, you won't need to see pets or tanks, as they'll be marked or grouped smartly in raids. However, if you want to keep the main tank section, you can go ahead. Otherwise, click the red crosses twice to delete the panels, save for the group panels you want to keep them. Then, move the groups to whereabout you want them. You can use the test option to see what they'll look like with various amounts of raiders. Now, let's edit the actual frames themselves. To do this, go to the Panels tab. Remember that at any time you can move your frames. In this tab you can change the ordering of the panels, how they are sorted, and what the colours look like. To change their sizes, just go to the Sizing section. Here, use the bars to change the width and the height until you're happy with your selection. Now, this panel section contains everything you need to customise your frames. Take your time to go through everything and experiment. I like to change the textures to something clean, like the Blizzard Raid Bar or Aluminium, turn off headers and keep the raid icons enabled. If you want to see certain buffs, like your heal over time spells on the raid, then remember to check out the Hot Icon and Hot Bars sections and edit them as you'd like. Additionally, if you want to track debuffs, go to the Debuffs tab and take some time to mess around with how debuffs are displayed. Experimentation is great here. One note about the Voodoo Buff Watch. It isn't really necessary. To disable it, just go to Buffs and uncheck the Enable button. Now let's get our cast bars sorted out. Type slash Quartz to open up the Options menu. Expand the Quartz selection and toggle the bar lock. You now have lots of bars at the bottom of your screen. If they're lost behind other things, just go to the corresponding options menu and use the X and Y sliders to move the bar somewhere where you can click on it with your mouse. You'll want to have your player cast bar somewhere where you can easily see it, even if you don't normally cast. This will let you see things like channels, hearthstone casts and things like that. Likewise, having your target cast bar near the middle of the screen will allow you to see easily what the enemy is casting and if it needs to be interrupted. The options here are fairly simple. Just use the width and height bars to get your cast bars as you'd like them. One final note on Quartz. I suggest disabling the Latency, Trade Skill Merge, GCD, Buff, Timer, Swing, Range and Flight options. I find that these just get in the way of an otherwise fantastic cast bar add-on. Finally, let's talk about scrolling combat text. Type slash SCT menu to open up its menu. SCT, or Scrolling Combat Text, is pretty simple to set up. You have three different anchors, 1, 2, and Message. On each one you can assign various messages. Use the SCT Events menu to do this. I personally like having the damage dealt to me and the healing on the same anchor, 
and important messages like active skills, interrupts, dispels and killing blows on another. To edit where these anchors go, go to the SCT frames. Now you can see where they are. Use the tabs at the top to change what anchor you're editing and then edit them however you'd like. I like to have the animation type set to either vertical with the text scrolling down or to HUD curved. At any point you can hit the test button to see what the animations will look like. Once you have your anchors in position and the text assigned, go to the SCT Spells menu. Here you can fine tune things like overhealing, hots, icons, colours, damage types and spell names. I prefer to have things as simple as I can. Additionally, if you decide to have spell names on, you can shorten them in two different ways. You can truncate, which will cut off the word after the selected number of letters, or abbreviate, which will just abbreviate spells for you. The SCT animation screen is fairly simple and you can generally leave it alone. However, if you want to avoid low damage messages to reduce the spam, you can use the filters on the right to set what doesn't come through. However, it's capped at 500 so you might not get that much use out of it. The other two menus aren't really that important for setting the add-on up. Once you have SCT set up, you just need to set bigwigs up. Alternatively, you can use DBM, and the two add-ons work very similarly. Just access the options menu by either typing slash bigwigs, slash B, or slash DBM, and just access the option that allows you to move your bars. Just make sure they're in a good position that allows you to easily see them without them being on top of other parts of your UI. Once that's done, you've got your UI set up. Thank you for watching this guide. I hope you found it helpful. This is only the first part in what's looking to be a four video long series. The next video will cover streamlining your user interface. For now, take the time to get used to your new UI. Kill some bad guys, do a couple of LFRs, and remember to tweak things. The glory of a custom built UI is that you can tweak the tiniest of things pretty easily, because you went through the process of setting it all up. Thank you for watching, and I wish you the best of luck with your new UI, and of course, best of luck with your loot.